by your name. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come just to say we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to assemble ourselves in the house of worship. We pray, Lord God, that you just come and have your way. Lord God, we release ourselves unto you on this afternoon. Father, you just have your way in this place on this afternoon. We thank you, Lord God, for your sweet spirit, Lord God, abiding in this place, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we have a mind, Lord, to be faith, Lord God, to come out, Lord, just to see what you have to say on this afternoon. Lord God, we come seeking, Lord God, a word for you on today, Lord God. We in need of a word. We pray, Lord God, for strength, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you just protect us, Lord God, that you keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more time, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You can have your seats. Amen. Amen. We bless God for today. Amen. We bless God for today. Amen. 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 Now I get to hear myself twice. Hallelujah. Amen. Sound like I'm back in the day on the farm between the house and the barn. Amen. Amen. But we thank God that we're here. Amen. A little weak in the body. Both, both physically and mentally. Amen. Amen. Bambi wanted to run out in front of me yesterday. Hit my truck. Amen. But Bambi got what Bambi wanted. Bambi did. Amen. Left right that side of the road. So you didn't pick him up. I'm going to put that in my truck. You done lost your mind. <laughs> Amen. I don't eat deer. Amen. But we thank God for today. We thank God for the youth here that are here. Amen. So uh, it's our intention that we just talk this afternoon. Because like I say, you know, uh, physically the body's a little, little ailing a little bit. But amen. God is still God. Amen. So, if you would, did you read for me? Let's go to Romans chapter 12. And we read verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Amen. We want, we want to talk about the metamorphosis. Amen. Metamorphosis. It's not a Greek word. It's an English word, but it comes from a Greek pretense. Amen. Metamorphosis. In essence, yeah, man, you don't want that big highfalutin word to say to change. <laughs> Amen. So Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So, we want to pull a little bit from out of the second verse. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And we know that the author of Romans is who who wrote the book of Romans? Paul. And Paul and Paul's audience is who? The church. The church. Amen. You know, I, it, it amazes me that, you know, the New Testament basically has a lot of writing dealing with the church, preparing the church, giving the church instruction. Those who are supposed to be quote unquote saved, born again, filled with his Holy Spirit, but are giving us instruction on how to maintain our relationship with God. 
Amen. And, and I also wonder why do we need to have so much instruction on how to maintain our relationship with God? And the reason being is because the same way that we have our relationship with God is the same way that we can lose our relationship with God. Amen. So it said, and be not conformed. This word conform in the Greek is shusimatizo. Amen. Did y'all get that? Spelling. S-U-S-C-H-E-M-A-T-I-Z-O. Shuklematizo. Amen. Don't ask me to spell it again because my echo will give it to you twice. <laughs> so, this is a compound word with the preposition S-U-N, which means will, prefixed to the verb form of the word schema, S-C-H-E-M-A, and means outline, a, dry, a diagram. We get the English word scheme, you know, is an angelic form of the Greek word schema. Amen? The word has to do with a schematic outline and the thought inherent in this compound Greek word along with its native compound is to not outline a diagram of your life according to this present age. What are you saying? It's saying, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And it goes on saying, be not conformed to this world. Don't outline your life according to this world. Amen. 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 Child of God, church folk, don't outline your life according to this present age, according to, amen, the world system. Hmm. And that's a lot that's going on now. Where the church has outlined its programs according to include the world system. The church has. The place that is that the place that's supposed to house the presence of God, where we can come to this place and we can receive from God. This place now has begun to outline their services according to the world system. Amen. Why? Because instead of using the word to attract the people, they want to use the world system to try to attract people to the word. Now you're drawing a, cl a crowd, but are you being infected in reaching them with the word? Go, go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Second Corinthians 4 and 4. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. During this present age, there is a world kingdom in which the Gentile nation ruled the earth under the control and dominion of Satan. Amen. The God of this age. Read that one more time, D. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. In whom the God of this world has done what? Blinded what? Of who? Them that do what? Believe not. So how is it that the church wants to piggyback or come into cohorts or come into fellowship with the world system where the world system has intent on blinding the eyes of those who believe not? So if you are a believer of Jesus Christ and you've drawn up with those outside of the kingdom of God, what's going to happen with your fellowship with God? See, I couldn't realize that when two are walking together, one is going to change the other. Amen. 
And if you own, and if you are a child of God and you're constantly on the world's platform, guess who's going to be changed? But I'm a child of God. When I speak, demons tremble. Things happen when I go into these, these places. Keep fooling yourself. Amen. Keep fooling yourself. But I don't drink. Yep, you sit at the bar long enough, you can get thirsty. And water's not going to satisfy you. There's going to be a familiar spirit that's going to overtake you, amen, and you're going to start ordering something, amen, that's not the virgin type, but it is the real deal. But I'm filled. The world won't change me. Stay where I'm long enough. Amen. We understand that fallen men is ruling the earth which is under a curse directly under the one who has disqualified himself to rule. And we talk about Satan along with his angels, the one who fell from heaven, amen, who currently rules in the heavenly places over this world. Now, folks might say, how is it that Satan is in the heavenly places and Jesus is in heaven? Oh, you got to understand the different levels of heaven. Amen. Satan currently abides in the heavenly state along with his cohorts to condemn you, to bring about change. Go to Luke chapter 4. Read verse 5 and 6. The change. Is it there? Luke chapter 4 verses 5 and 6. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. Where? A high mountain. Not a low mountain. And we're talking about the devil taking Jesus up to a high place. Keep reading. Show unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee in the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So the devil said that he has what? He has some power. He has some authority. He said, I'm able to give you these things on the condition that you bow down and you worship me. Go to um, Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Satan and his boys are ruling in the heavenly places. Go ahead, read. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In high places. Amen. So, just because you get into an argument with someone face to face, it's not the local level that's the problem. It's coming from a high place. Amen. amen. The enemy is using one or the other, puppeting them, amen, to create that disturbance, amen, in your atmosphere. To bring about the change in your atmosphere. Amen. But he can't touch me. He touched somebody. Because someone was pulled out of character. Someone start acting crazy. Someone start acting out of the will of God. What happened? He became infected, amen, by Satan. And he sent his imps down, say, hey, I need for you to cut up. So let's look here. <laughs> Everywhere one's looked, there's something wrong with the structure of the present kingdom. The Gentile nations are out of place. Israel is out of place. We've been talking about that a lot. We've been talking about the message of the prophet. Satan and his angels are out of place, and Christ and his co heirs, those destined to occupy the regal, the regal position with Christ in, in the kingdom, we're out of place as well. These conditions have continued unchanged since the fall of Adam which resulted in the entire creation coming unto the curse produced by sin. And they have continued unchanged into this present generation. 
The Bible tells us because of one man's sin, sin entered into the world. Adam's sin and animal changed the course of everything. Everything got out of place because of Adam's sin. Amen. Look at Luke 21, 24. Luke 21 and 24. Yes. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Amen. So Israel, being scattered among all the nations, and no change will occur until Christ return and takes his place back in the kingdom. All because of sin. Sin brings about change in your life, amen, the type of change that you don't really want. But when we yield our members, amen, to the enemy, the enemy launches an attack and he runs crazy in your life bringing about changes. I say this a time before, a few years ago, there was a man I knew that was in church and, and he had this sin and he said every time this sin, he would go to do this sin. He said he didn't want to do this sin, but his body kept pulling him to do this sin because he did not get himself delivered from that sin. So the enemy is not going to try to tempt you out to entice you with something that's new to you. He could use something that you have had some acquaintance with before. Amen? That's why I say earlier, don't you take yourself and think you're all big and bad and you go into the enemy's camp, amen, and you have not been totally committed to the Lord. There's still a hint of sin in your life. The enemy's going to that, sniff that thing out and he's going to use that sin against you. All your work that you thought you were going to be doing for Christ, amen, he's going to expose you and embarrass you. Amen. We're talking about the metamorphosis, the change. Understand this. The rightful place of Satan and his angels is in the abyss, ultimately in the lake of fire. The rightful place of Christ and his co-heirs is ruling <clears throat> ruling in the stead of Satan and his angels. The rightful place of Israel is dwelling in the land co covenanted by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with a the theocracy, amen, at the head of the nation. And the rightful place for the Gentile nation is dwelling in their respectful land are from under the dominion and rule of Satan in a position of suburban to the blessed house of Israel. We can't be playing with the devil and expect to receive the blessing from the Lord. We can't, I, I, my wife used this analogy um, I was last week, she was speaking about something uh, with folks, she told the folks they need two sets of clothes. I think she was talking to people on my job. They need two sets of clothes. You need a work attire and you need a party attire. Amen. As children of God, our attire should always be Christ attire. Always Christ attire. Amen. Do we are we checking ourselves before we leave the house? Are we asking, will God be is God pleased with what I got on? Is this okay for me to go on a date with God? Will he welcome me with what I have on? Now we're talking about the outward. Okay? Now let's go. We can dress up the outward. And fake and look the part. But what about the inward part? Is God pleased with my inward parts? Am I doing all I can to make sure that God gets the glory out of my life each and every day? Amen? Go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 and 
I, I want you, Deke, if you would, I want you to read the B part of First John chapter 5, verse 19. The B part. First John chapter 5, verse 19. Yes. The whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world. Okay? Presently, the whole world lies in wickedness. Wickedness means the whole world lies in the evil one. The position of standing of the believer is in Christ, and the position occupied by the world is in the evil one. These positions are diametrically opposed to one another. Amen? Which means you can't be praising God and say you're a child of God and then you want to be praising the devil at the same time they are opposed to each other. Amen? They can't dwell in the same vessel. Now, go roll over to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Then I want you to read the A part. 1 John 2.15, the A part. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So I have a question. Why? Why? It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why? Why can't I love the things of this world? No, I, no, no microphone runners. Why can't I love the things of this world? Because those are the things that uh, draw us away from God and send us to hell. Amen. Minister? Because the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world lies in wickedness. The things of the world will take us to hell. The whole world lies in wickedness. So why is it that the church constantly is trying to have a relationship with the world? Read that part again, D. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. This is the commandment. As a child of God, we're not to love the things of the world. It shouldn't be our desire to be possessors of the things of this world. We should not be envious of those who do evil, and it appears as though that they are progressing greatly. They are accumulating a lot of things. Lord, when can I get, when, when is my ship going to come sailing in? When you going to start trusting and believing in God, that God has already sent your ship in. Amen. That he's already made a way for you. And that's no country talk. Don't be long-eyed. Greed gets you nowhere. church folk. If you were to leave here today, go home, briefcase on your front step, $10 million, what type of change is going to take place in your life? Will it change you? No, Ella, I'm just going to praise God. I thank it. I'm going to tie it off of it and I'm going to do this. Really? If you're not prayed up, that money will change you. Amen? It will change you. You start walking around with your nose up above everybody, thinking that you all of that. Why? Because you have accumulated some worldly stuff and now you have the same mentality as the people of the world. Amen. There's a lot of rich folks 
who die and leave their wealth here because their money has become their God. And they think that their money will keep them here and sustain them forever. But the same money that they were holding on to, amen, when they die, they can't take it with them. Love not the world, neither things of this world. The world lies in evil. The world lies in the evil one. The entire present system is under Satan's control and sway. And whether the world realizes it or not, the program, the aim, the ambition, and aspiration of the incumbent ruler are being carried out within the present system. You look at our present government system, programs that are being initiated, programs that are being started. All these programs are promoting the world's value. I was speaking to someone earlier this week, and I told them, I said, our current president is just fulfilling the same agenda that Obama had. Amen. I know y'all don't like that. Amen. But it is. Everybody hoop and holler for Obama. I was even speaking to someone, they said, I vote for Obama because he was black. Really? Didn't understand to figure out that they need to know the platform that he was running on. But a lot of folks that voted from him within five months, they find out who he really was. When he signed into effect in June, that the month of June would be Gay Lesbian Month, and they start flying the gay lesbian flag at the White House under his administration. Now you got the current administration pushing the same thing, all about killing babies, don't care about babies, but they think they have your best interest at heart because from time to time, they're going to throw you a little bone, throw you some money, you're going to be happy and everything will be all right. Amen. This is the world system. The world system is, is geared towards pulling the church folks away from the things of God. Amen. If I give them enough money, then they'll stop trusting their God, and then they'll start believing in me. And now I got you hoodwinked because of the world's system. Amen? D, go, go back to um, Romans 12. Let's look at 1 and 2 again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, it does not become Christian to involve themselves in the affairs of this present world system during this present age. By so doing, Christians are, in effect, defiling their high calling in Christ through stepping down into an arena occupied by those in the evil one. It does not become Christian to involve yourself in the affairs of this present world system during this present age. By doing so, you are in effect defiling your high calling in Christ through stepping down into an arena occupied by those in the evil one. Now, I want to draw our attention to something that the Lord dropped on me while I was looking at this. Go, go to Luke chapter 15, and I, I want to try to help us understand what I'm talking about here. Luke chapter 15, and let's look at verse, start reading at verse 11. You as a child of God, you as a Christian, when you start taking on the affairs and utilizing this world system, 
You are defiling your high calling in Christ Jesus by stepping down into the arena that is occupied by the evil one. Read, sir. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall unto me. And he divided unto them his living. Now, now, we were talking about here, we were talking about the prodigal son. And, and if you go back up and we read a little bit, a little, little briefing on this and we get a, a better understanding, you see here that the man had two sons. The man in that resume that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had two sons living in the kingdom, being treated right by the king. One got upset and thought that he wanted more than he ought to have. So in essence, he starts smelling himself and telling dad, dad, give me that part that I deserve. I want mine now. I can't wait until you die. I want mine now. So he's taking himself from a high place, amen, being ruled by the enemy. He rules by the enemy, and the enemy takes him to a low place. Keep reading. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey to a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. All right, so hold on, hold on. So when he left home, he had plenty. He had plenty of friends. See, when you have a rock, when you have a lot of the world's system, a lot of the world's good, you can have a lot of worldly friends. A lot of worldly friends. But when the worldly goods run out, the worldly friends gonna leave you standing there. And now you're standing there and you're like, I remember when. Yeah, I remember when I was sitting in my father's house and my father had plenty to give unto me and I didn't think that that was enough for me and I wanted to go out and do my own thing. So I went out into the world. The enemy fooled me to leave my place of safety. The enemy fooled me to leave my place of safety and go out here into this world system that was just where that the Bible tells us don't love the things of this world. I left a safe place and I went to another country, a country, amen, that was not designed for me to be in, but I went there and I fell on rough times. Some of us with a little age on us can attest to the fact that we have a, when we have experienced God in the past and we turned back on God and we went the other way, we went into a far country and we went into that far country, we fell on hard times. We thought that everybody that was hanging with me when I had a little something that they would come to my rescue. But you'll find out that there was no one out there that loved you like the one that was at the house with you. You went out, you spent all, you wasted all. You in a far country, you in a strange place that there's no help for you. No one cares for you. Now you got to fear for yourself. Now you got to take yourself from where you once was at a priestly state. Now you at a servant state that you got to go out, amen, and feed the swine. You left your place of high calling to come down just to deal with the enemy. The enemy strips you of all your worldly possessions. The devil comes to do what? Steal, kill, and what? Destroy. That's his agenda. It's nothing new. That's his agenda. To steal, kill, and to destroy. He was on his way to kill this young man. Keep reading, D. And, would, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. 
And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough into spirit, and I perish with hunger? Read that verse again, Deke. When he did what? And when he came to him, himself, he When said, he realized that way he had fallen short, when he came to himself, he had a change took place. He realized, I left safety. I left security. I left more than enough. I was upset back there. We go back to reading 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. The enemy had his finger in his eye, as my grandma used to say, blinding him to make him think that he could do better out there in the world. Amen. There's been a lot of folks who have been churching who have left church because they felt that they could do better out there in the world. But when you look at this parable here, it will let you know that when you leave the ark of safety, uh -huh. amen, when you leave the ark of safety, the hounds of the devil is going to come after you, amen, and it's not going to take long. Because the Bible says when he left, he went out, he had fun. Fun ran out. The devil was on his track. Read this thing again, verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough into spirit, and I perish with hunger? And I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Amen. Amen. He made a mistake. He came to himself. He repented. He realized that I got to go back to my father's house because in my father's house there is plenty there. I need to go back and tell my father, Father, I have sinned against thee. I've done this thing. He's taking ownership of his part. I've done this thing. And we were to keep reading, you'll find out that when he started going back home, when his father saw him, his father ran out to receive him. That's right. That's right. Amen? And then he wanted to start telling his father all this stuff. Father, I don't want to hear nothing about that. All I know is right now you were once lost, but now you're found. You're back here. That's good enough for me. And this is how our heavenly father is. We make a mistake, yes, we repent, but he don't want you to keep telling, Lord, you know, I did bad yesterday on Thursday. You know, I thank you for forgiving me, but Lord God, you know, I just did bad. No, get it right and keep moving. Amen. The Lord's not dwelling on so why are you dwelling on it? Amen. Amen. But see, this, this is a part of the tactics of the enemy. The enemy wants you to think, that, amen, that your repentance is not enough, that you need to work out something with God, that you need to work out a deal with God so that God can truly forgive you of your sin. The Bible says if we just confess that the Lord is faithful, that's all it takes. It don't take you, you writing out no dissertation of everything that you have done wrong. Lord, I repent. Case closed. Let's keep it moving. Amen. Go go back. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Uh, read verse 14 through 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Say what? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So Paul is talking to whom? Talking to the church. Read again, D. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord have Christ with Belial? Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. 
And God have said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Amen. Amen. So Christ rejected by the world, is seen a place removed from the world. And Christians are to share this rejection by and separate themselves from the world with Christ. It is not possible for Christians to involve themselves in the affairs of this present world system during this present age and at the same time share Christ's rejection. Amen. By separating themselves from the world. So what are you saying, El? Over in the book of Amos 3 and 6, 3 and 3, it says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? So you mean to tell me that the people that you hang out all the time, your best is a friend, amen, are saint children of the devil, unsaved folks? That you're constantly dealing with them, that you're constantly going to the places that they like to go. The Bible says, can two walk together except they agree? Now I know you don't want to like, I know you don't like what I'm about to say. Apparently, you are in agreement what's going on because it satisfies amen a craving that you have. And it won't be long that that longing that you have, you're going to fulfill that. Why? Because you're walking with someone, amen, who's out of the ark of safety, and you said it's okay. But the Bible says, can two walk together? Except they agree. Except they agree. Now, we all grew up when we was in school. We used to hang out with some people. Hey, amen. But as we got older, and our lifestyle changed, those people fell off. You don't hang with them anymore. Amen. I don't need to get you on Friday evening, though, let's, let's turn back a few. Let's hit one from time to time. No, my life has changed. You still doing that, that's your business. Amen? But I'm not going to come run you down or invite you over to my house where you can do the same thing at my house. That's right. Amen. If a repairman come to my house and they smoke, I don't even want you smoking on my ground. You want to smoke? Go across the road and smoke. Because you smoke in my yard, you can leave a butt in my yard. Amen. Is it that serious? Yes, it is that serious to me. It's my property. I don't want you drinking on my property. Amen. You got to have your drink, you go someplace else. When well, my wife and uncle were doing some work at the house, and, you know, the tighter he get, the better his work would be. Mm. So he want, he want, some, he want some, some juice to get him tight her. Oh, you won't be getting that at this house. In fact, we can go ahead and stop this now. <laughs> you can go ahead and leave. So what you're trying to do, it ain't gonna happen up in my house. Amen. You can bring it up in there and you get too messed up, then you can leave the evidence in my house. No, I don't need those spirits in my house. I learned it, so I learned to read the label. It called the still spirit. Which means, long as, they, long as you don't break the seal, it's all right. But once you break the seal, those spirits come out. Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they agree? And we're just reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Will be 6? Yeah. 6, they're talking about be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? 
lot of folks that come to the house of God and they receive a word from God. They really don't understand the word that they heard in the house of God. But instead of them addressing the person who gave them the word, which was the man or woman of God, they will go outside and get some palm reader to tell them what the spiritual leader told them. The Bible said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You mean to tell me you want to get something spiritual, amen, for someone who's not spiritual? Now I know what they say, but what do you say? And more than likely, you're going to go with the one that's going to appease your flesh. Amen? Because most of the time when you see a word from the God, amen, it, it, it rubs you the wrong way. And you really don't want to receive that thing. So in essence, you want someone, you know, to put some salve on that thing to make it feel better. No, you need to take this thing full throttle. You take it full throttle, amen, you get better results from it. Amen. So, we done read Romans 12 too, a few times, but the word of God tells us to do not be conformed to this age. The Christian is commanded to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And our mind is transformed or renewed by what? The word of God. Amen. It's going to take the word to transform our mind. I can tell you when, when I was living in sin, amen, you could tell me that whatever I thought was wrong. Because in my mind, in my mind, everything I did, it was right according to Tony Jones. In my mind. Amen. So therefore, it took the word of God, amen, to transform my way of thinking. The word had to come into me, amen, and push out all of those foolish, ignorant, dumb, stupid ways that I thought I was right and put into me, amen, the thing that I should be doing. But until then, could tell me I wasn't right. I hear you. Okay. But then I'm going to do, I'm going to do me. So, when we look at this word transform, in the Greek it's metamorpho. M-E-T-A-M-O-R-P-H-O-O. -O, metamorpho. This is where we get the English word metamorphosis is derived from. Amen. This word refers to an inward change brought about completely apart from the power of the individual himself. This word brings about an inward change brought about completely apart from the power of the individual himself. The individual Christian is powerless to bring about this metamorphosis. 2 Corinthians 11, 13, through 15. Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. All right. So we just read it out of Romans 12, 2. Talking about be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15, it's talked about Satan said to be transformed into an angel of light and his minister transformed as minister of righteousness. Transformed in Romans 12 and 2. Transformed in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. 
but two different meanings. Two different meanings. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that transformation, amen, takes place on the inward side. It's an inward change that takes place, amen, that displays itself on the outside. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, this transformation, this is metachi matizo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This transformation takes place on the outside where the individual has the ability to transform him or herself. The Bible says, for such are possibly seen for transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Mm. Inward, in Romans 12, 2. Outward, 2 Corinthians 13 and 15. Satan seeks to counterfeit the work of the Spirit by substituting an outward change in place of the inward change. And the nature of the source of this pseudo change often goes unrecognized. The Bible says Satan goes about as Satan disguised himself in sheep's clothing. He changes himself. But you find today, there's a lot of folks, amen, who have become hoodwinked, amen, by the fact of the enemy transforming himself outwardly because he's doing something that is appeasing to their flesh. And they're just yum yumming it up because that's what flesh wants. We realize and we've seen a lot of TV, amen, and they, they, they nah, nah, I won't say that. We talked about, you got your, the pastor who is a man, and the pastor is married to a man. Now he's the first man, and the church accepts this because the pastor marries a man, it's okay to have a first man. We will adopt that. You know, we've got to be, you got to have this inclusion thing. No, everybody needs somebody. But what does the word say? Is that right according to the will of God? And I can promise you, the man that's married to a man is not preaching about against homosexuality. Amen. He's not preaching against gay lesbianism. Amen. 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 And you have and you have folks who 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 are mar a man that's married to a woman. That will be members of this of that type of assembly, amen, because they say, I'm getting the word, I'm being fed by the pastor. But is he giving you the whole rope? Are he giving you bits and pieces? Giving you a feel-good message. Amen. Nothing to help you get delivered, set free to come up out of your sin. Nothing to bring about a change, an inward change. We become today, we, 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 we settle for an outward change. Right. We settle for an outward change. But what about an inward change? Something that we need that's going to sustain us. Amen. I can promise you that when the inward change took place on the inside of me, amen, the outward change took place second. But I had to be affected by the inward change first before I could have impact on the outward change. Years ago, my wife, and she used to dress, she used to, wait a little, be hitting right there. Look good. Brother like it. But when the inward change took place, the outward change took place. Now, brother has to like something differently. Same person. Amen. But different results because of the inward change. That's why I, I, I find it hard to understand and believe that you are a person who's claimed that you are a child of God, and when you come into the house of God, amen, you look so worldly. Like, who are you trying to hook? Who are you trying to pull in? Mm. Who are you trying to pull in? Who are you trying to entice? 
married woman, married man. Well, that lets me know that you're not satisfied with what you have in the house because you're advertising for some attention that you ain't getting from the house. But if you do, different story, different subject, different subject, different subject. Amen. So, go, go to Philippians 1, 6, 1, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. So, we need, and we will close on that. So, Christians who seek to bring their change to Romans 12, 2, themselves will always affect a meta schema, an outward change, rather than a metamorphosis, an inward change. And at the time of birth from, the, from, from above, the Spirit of God began to do a work on the inside of the Christian, on the inside of the Christian, on the inside of the Christian. And he will continue that work, amen, until Jesus Christ comes. Read Philippians 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Read it one more time, read one more time, one more time. Being confident of this very thing. This very thing. That he which have begun a good work in you. In you. Will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Will bring it to maturity. Is there any way in that verse where they say he need your help? You sure now? I want to make sure now. Who began to work? Who? Who's going to do? Do all the work? Who's going to finish the work? Which means he don't need you doing nothing to help him accomplish what he wants to accomplish. Amen. We have to realize and remember that God is faithful to his word. Amen. What he started, he shall bring it to completion. Amen. I think that we need to make sure that we are on board and we allow him to do what he wants to do on the inside, on the inside, on the inside of us. Amen. Our God is not into Maybelline and Revlon. Amen. He's not in the way to mass, disguising ourselves. But he wanna do a work on the inside that will produce an effect on the outside. Come on, give the Lord a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.